Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar Talk. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but uh, I've had a really, really uh, interesting time um, doing a couple of other projects, and it's just, uh, it's it's been a, a little bit of a, of a weird time here in this household. Um, basically, you know, I've just been doing, uh, kind of working on a new project, which I will... Uh, kind of go f on this um here today and one of those projects believe it or not is my eu server experience you're probably thinking cougar what is wrong with you to just go into the eu server on playstation and just start over um <laughs> You're, you're probably thinking you, you must be crazy and out of your mind to, to try to do this but uh, to be honest it wasn't that bad it all started when um, the server was down and we could still go to the European server and basically a couple of us went over there uh, we were waiting for trader flip on a Tuesday and I think the the server came at like 4 p.m. or like yeah I think it was like 4 p.m. my time um, which is 5 p.m. Eastern uh, in it was just a really weird day because they they kept uh, pushing the the maintenance back again and again and again that day and it's a little bit stressful for uh, the guild masters in the guild because you don't know if you're guild has a trader or not and that is a very stressful situation a trader flip uh every every tuesday is a stressful situation for any gm because you know they they just want to provide the best for each of their guilds um especially if they have multiple guilds i know one of our guildies tiff she has five guilds on her own and you know she's always you know just trying to make what's best for that guild um for her guild and if you want to check those out uh diagon alley nocturne um the burrow honeydukes uh and azkaban those are her guilds if you would like an invite to those guilds just holler at me cougars bay i will get you into one of those guilds um, very good guild very good uh very good people over there but all in all it, it's it started it started there so we went over there and i had gone over there before because when they were doing the sigic villa giveaway i said well let me go over there and get the sigic villa i'm gonna go get that house just to have it in the other server in case um i don't know just for for craps and giggles so i decided to to do that i decided that um you know just to to have that available uh to me and that's that's when uh that's when we we did it we we did that and we were like ah oh, let's let's go over there real quick and kind of see what what is uh what is going on over there so I went over there and I started like you know just farming and just kind of seeing everything um, how the other server was and the people are really nice <laughs> the accent um, can be a little bit different that's that's one thing that I noticed um, the slang is a little bit different the people are just as nice as the NA server. Um, there are elitists over there, just like we have elitists over here. There are some mean people over there, just like over here in NA. But overall, the the hospitality and the friendliness is there. Um, I joined a couple of guilds, and you know, right away when I was trying to do some writs from what I had. Um, I asked for like bless the soul in one of my guilds and you know they they gave it to me no questions asked I was like hey can somebody spare me like three bless this 
and I think they somebody sent me like 10 so it's just kind of like that um, <laughs> and I started doing writs because really that's you know that's where you need to start and then I was like you know what let me let me experience what it is like in the EU server to to be one without no help because I have no help over there other than what I have and uh, there's a lot of asking for help um, I've asked for help a couple of times from guildies over there but I have also contributed to my guilds over there just as much as I would you know if I was in other guilds over here um, besides you know the the getting keeping gold and such um, I usually give about 10 to 20k for each of my guilds over there um, I'm in four guilds right now and then I have a bank um, just in case I need one in the future um, that's that's there so four guilds I usually do about 40 to 80k a week on those uh, depending and it wasn't as that much at first but now since I'm making a little bit more money um, I, I can do that and basically it's it's very very interesting because I'm like over here thinking how how am I like going to pay these people money but um, the best way is just to start doing your writs um, get to level 6 ASAP and just start doing writs start doing writs um, just you know just do writs as, as, as best as you can and just start doing writs um, that's that's what I did I started with one character I have three characters there so far uh, I started with one character um, I'm CP like 220 something right now and on one character and the other character is level 30 something at the moment and then I have a really low B character which uh, once that other character gets the CP I will be starting to work on that um, but this has been a project that I wanted to see because I wanted to really see what newer players without help go through and there's so much out there telling you to to do your writs you know try to quest try to do as much as possible to to try to to get you know gold and money questing is a lot of fun um one thing that i did is um i i did some sky shards uh, i went through a couple of uh, places did some sky shards but you can easily go and do the harborage um in you know just to to kind of do that you can do the harborage quest and that that will help quite a bit to to get you skill points and you know if you if you do the the harborage quest i think you get quite a bit of skill points and as a new player like you're gonna see the lore of the game um, so that's probably the best place to start instead of like going to provinces and such. Um, the reason I didn't do the harborage is because I already went through it before, so I don't really need to do it. But one of the best things to do is get into a guild, whether it be trading guild, social guild, whatever, and start going through way shrines to start traveling to people like at first. Try to unlock as many way shrines as you can um, because that's going to help you later on whenever you want to go get some sky shards and just kind of go around. Um, one thing that um, I do suggest you spend a little bit of money on um, just to make this go a little bit faster is to, on your first character that you do, 
get some mount speed on that on that guy um you'll you'll get a mount but get some mount speed because it's just gonna be helping you uh, a lot more now i did daggerfall covenant and um, one thing that i did and i'm doing every single time every single day is i'm going into pvp and i am doing the quest in bruma from grigor durga i believe is her name it's not the guy in the church is the chick at the inn um that is kind of like sitting down on the floor and those quests are just like around there they don't tell you to go into a delve or go find some mushrooms somewhere else um it's all in there it's about six or seven quests i believe there's there's one that you got to kill the four different kinds of uh, uh daedra around so that's one there's one that you got to talk to the two guys um that are with her that's two the kill the magister is three then you gotta place the supply um for the runners that's four uh close the portals is five and then uh, i'm trying to see what else there is i think it just might be five i think it's just five it's five or six anyways those quests are super easy because they are all around there so it's gonna take you maybe 10 minutes at most to get all those quests i don't think it even takes you that long not only that but the new um chapter is going to have the deadly strike set be pretty good that is the way to farm that gear um and what i've been doing with my main character is just trying to get some deadly um strike sets from those quests um you're not guaranteed the deadly strike um unless you actually shop with the um with the ap in that merchant in bruma but from those bruma containers there's a chance for you to get any you know a random piece of any of the sets that are from bruma so you do have a chance to get them um i've gotten a couple of them and it's been it's been pretty decent um but i haven't gotten anything too crazy uh just yet but um i mean it's it's been interesting it's been interesting as far as um you know like my eu experience has been um I've, I've just been doing questing. I've been doing the daily random every single day on the two characters since I'm trying to level my second character. My first character is already leveled. So the reason I'm trying to level that second character to CP and then start to work on that third character is so I can level CP a lot faster. See, once you have multiple characters that are CP, you're gonna have that random normal dungeon that you can do every day. And the reason I say random normal is because it's a lot faster, but you can always do a random vet dungeon. Um, if you want to get into the harder content and if you got patience, you can always do a random vet. However, when you're starting out, I do recommend you stay away from the random vets until you're at least 500 CP. Um, as far as the DLC ones go, um, the other vets like Way Rest, um, City of Ashdos, go ahead and go, go for it. But as far as the DLC dungeons on vet, try to get to like 500 CP because I feel like you're going to need a little bit more DPS to not get carried in there fully and completely. I'm not saying you can't try them at, um, lower CP because <laughs> i'm the one that um was crazy enough to go into scrivener's hall at cp i think it was like 169 um a fella in my guild posted saying i need a dd for scrivener's hall vet um and i was like sure um let, let's go let's 
let's go and see you know what this is all about so i went in there and and i told the guys i i was straight up with the guys and i said hey look i'm low cp but just because i'm low cp doesn't mean that i don't know what i'm doing i know the mechanics i just you're gonna carry my dps a little bit but um as far as everything else like you're not gonna have to you know unless something hits me really bad that isn't supposed to hit me then i'm gonna die um i did die a couple of times they wanted to do hard mode on the first boss and we we got to like 40 percent in hard mode on that first boss with my cp 169 in there and um the guys were really impressed with my gameplay but obviously i'm an end game player in the na server so i still take those things that i learn in na and push it into eu and they were really impressed they're like cool you know like when we finished um i was like hey um do you mind giving me the light helmet because i got the medium helmet and they gave me the light helmet that they got and they were really nice about it they they were really excited to have me as part of the guild and they said, you know, like, if you're ever around and you see us looking up for, for a dungeon, just just say hi. We'll love to take you into, you know, our vet extravagant pieces. <laughs> um, but I'll have to keep an eye out on those guys, really, um, as far as uh, everything else. And now, <laughs> um, the pugging is has been interesting as far as normal dungeons have gone um it's either very good or very bad um there's some in the middle pugs like middle dps wise of people but um there really hasn't been a, like a really really bad dungeon um but i haven't done it on vet yet so i've been just doing pugging as far as it goes is normal pug in in the group finder so that's been interesting and then trials i've been going into craglorn um pretty much during the day because that's when people are on over there um probably midday is is when a lot of the eu server is on because you know when people are at work over here that's when they're they're there but um that's that's when i've been going <laughs> and and it's funny because <laughs> let's just say um it's been an interesting experience so the i've done vet Hellra and vet aa and then i did vet aa hard mode i've done normal kinds ages normal dread sail normal cloud rest um i think those are all the normals that i've done and those are all the vets that i've done i did uh vet aa hard mode because i was in craglorn um farming trying to like gather up my craft bag with materials and craglorn is probably the best place to farm as far as it goes because you have the chance to get nern crux um I just try to stay away from uh, a lot of the mobs if I need to, you know, when I'm farming. And it's just a lot easier to get an urn there. Uh, and that's going to benefit me later because I am learning. Um, I am learning some stuff uh, in the. Over there, like I'm, I'm learning some traits and such uh, at first. So I'm going to need Nern to learn Nern, uh, Nern home items. But so i just get in there um i see somebody says looking for i think they said two dds for vet a and vet hell raw citadel hard mode must know um mechanics so i said okay i mean i know mechanics i'm gonna get a little bit carried as far as like dps goes but also i mean guys I was doing the vet craglorns at 15k dps way back in the day in hard mode so 
this basically just took me back to way back in the day when I was doing this crap on hard mode. Um, and it was interesting because um, in that trial, those guys were just amazing. They were pretty good players. Um, you could tell they were very end game. Um, they were a little bit toxic at the end, but this is what happened and this is what led to the toxic part. In VETA hard mode, you when the boss comes out, you stack behind her, tank is in front of her, grabs the axes, and then grabs the atros. Well, we had two other guys who were pugs, who uh, they, they got from Craglorn or wherever, and they were just running around. Um, one of them was uh, a heavy attack Sork, and the other one, I don't even know what the other one was, uh, but I know one was a heavy attack Sork, and they were just running around. And the bad part is that I don't mind people running around when they can run around in Trials, but in VETA hard mode, even in regular VETA, you shouldn't be running around because you're going to chain lightning people. And that's what kept happening. Like they were just causing chain lightning just all over the place. And, and I even like said something, I was like, Hey guys, like, please, um, you know, stop. You're, you're causing chain lightning. Stop moving. Stack with the group. I put it in the, in the chat and I'm like, well, they, they never did that. Um, and the thought came to me that, you know, maybe they didn't understand English, which it could be the case, but, um, I mean, it is what it is. Well, <laughs> the guy who had crown, like ended up kicking them right before we finished the boss, but we did tell them multiple times, Hey, like you need to stop doing what you're doing because that's, that's not cool. So they did kill a bunch of us. As far as everything goes, though, we, we killed we killed it because those guys were super, super good. Super, super endgame players. Um, at least three quarters of the team was endgame players. The rest were just... I think there's only four of us that were really pugs. And I told them, you know, hey, like, you know, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity. And they're like, well, you didn't really, you know... <laughs> You didn't really do anything to hurt our team, um, you know, as far as, you know, the other guys go or they just, they were just running around and such. And I told them, well, I'm originally from NA, so I know the mechanics and I know what I'm supposed to do. And um, they said, okay, that makes sense since they saw me um, do the mechanics really early before, you know, like just not even do the mechanics but like kind of react to the mechanics really early um and you only get that from experienced players so it's it's interesting to see a c a lower cp player do that um and when i see somebody do that then there you go now um there's a couple of times that i've been kicked out of the groups because of my low cp um it hasn't happened as much in the regular normal trials now that i'm past 160 but um it happened a couple of times in the regular trials before i hit 160 <laughs> and i was like hey you know guys i'm just trying to farm um i kind of explained my case to to the to the crown and i was like look i know what i'm doing like i know i'm you know detriment to the group but i'm probably hitting higher dps than somebody else that's like cp5 600 in your group because i'm doing a rotation so most of the time they've let me back um today though i had one that uh was the kinds ages and they needed two dds and i asked and i was like hey like they kicked me out um the guy didn't really tell me why but i have i figured it's probably because of my low cp and i told the guy like hey man you know, um, if it's because of my CP, like, you know, I do know the mechanics. Um, my DPS is going to be a little bit sus, but I do know the mechanics and I know what I'm doing. I have trifecta titles on, on NA, uh, including <laughs> the trial you're going into. And, um, like he showed me the memento totem that you get from hard mode. And I was like, yeah, I have that back in NA. 
and then he just stopped talking so i was like well okay um but one other thing is um the the other normal trial that i was kicked out of was normal sunspire um i have yet to do <laughs> normal sunspire because nobody will take me in uh, it's it's actually very funny but uh, i'm like what is going on here nobody will take me into normal sunspire um i told the guy i was like don't judge a book by its cover because you know you don't know who a low cp player could be and he he um he basically understood but at that time i was already in a vet hell raw um so i was like look man just do your thing i'm gonna do mine have a good day and i just did a vet hell raw because like advancing your kid is not a bad set to have um to kind of grind up and level up with so i was like yeah it's a good set to have well anyways the guy, um, the biggest takeaway that I see from, from this is don't judge a book by its cover, guys. Um, if you see a low CP player, just give them a chance to see what they got. See what, you know, if, if they pick up on stuff quick, especially if you're able to, to like kind of help them out a little bit. Um, that's the biggest takeaway that I've gotten from the EU server is to just like trust people a little bit more, um, kind of see what they're doing. Um, and you can always, you know, after if, if they do, um, if they really are noobs, um, and they keep doing mistake after mistake, that's when you, you can do what we did in that video and, and kick them out of the group but give people a chance that is that is the biggest takeaway that i've gotten from my time in the eu is to give people a chance um because you never know you never know and that is judging the book by its cover that's that's all i gotta say on that um I'm going to still continue my time in EU. Um, and one thing that I power level, I power level scrying, which if you guys really know me, I hate scrying power leveling. Um, that is like the biggest bad show of mine. But what I did is I went to Arteum and I was like, okay, let's go. And that's where I leveled up. Arteum is probably one of the best places to level up until you're able to scry the purple scrying stuff and then all that purple stuff that you've accumulated like probably play for like 10 days and then like take another week to like just up your levels um you can get to level seven if you just scry like each and this is gonna be very boresome guys you're gonna get bored of this okay because i did um but what i did is i scried for a level every day until I got to seven, uh, until I was able to do the the gold stuff. Um, the when you get to the purple stuff, when you can scry for the purple um, antiquities, that's when it's going to be a little bit quicker because it, it gives you more XP. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, the first part of it is going to be very boring. But the second part is going to be very, very good. So that is that is basically what I did as far as scrying. Um, as far as just leveling up, there was the the um, seals of Sanathar event was going on when I started this. So I actually did uh, some PvP stuff when when I was you know when I was doing this stuff. And I was like, hell yeah, let's go. PvP, PvP. It was pretty, it was pretty awesome. Like, I was like, yeah, let's go, PvP. So that's when I got the, the whole thing of like, maybe I should go to Bruma and do these quests every day. Cause like, it only takes like five, six minutes at most. Especially if you're able to travel to Bruma. Um, 
one of the campaigns there like it's just blue and that's blue pretty much owns everything it's a, one of the smaller campaigns and um and that's something that if you know like if you go into a campaign one day and you see that Bruma is not a travelable place and you have to like travel very far to do that is one of the things you can skip for the day if you need to um just to kind of like wait till the pvp side kind of settles the other day it was like somebody was in there farming for emperor i guess they were flipping the circle pretty heavily and then they kind of got a little bit of carried away and they took everything like everything all the all the so i was like i'm gonna let the server chill for a day um and that's what i did and that's you know the next day was like back to normal so that is one thing that if you if you need to skip for a day you can um if you don't have that much time you can but it's very good once you get to CP 160 at least because you have a chance to get that deadly stuff and that's where you make a lot of money. Um, the EU prices are a little bit different. So if you are going to venture into that side of the server just for shits and giggles, make sure you actually see the economy. That way you can make some money. There's some stuff that can make you a lot of money. Um, oh, I did normal halls of fabrication too and I sold the the little dwarven uh repair part at the end uh, i think it was like for 25k or something like that um so it, it helps when you're basically in craglorn and and just trying to pug stuff it will take a little bit more time um and there are trials guilds that you know do normal trials and such um in the server so you can you can start there but the guilds that I'm mainly at right now are mainly try are mainly trading guilds and yeah. So they're mainly trading guilds. It's it is what it is. But uh, as far as everything else, the best takeaway, like I said, that I took is don't judge a book a book by its cover because you shouldn't um let's see what this newbie can do let's see what this guy can do um be optimistic though don't don't like fully get him aside but just kind of see what they're up to and such before you kind of go from there but anyways thank you guys uh for watching and like i said it's i've been off for a little bit and you know i'm back if you want to be a part of the guild you uh have access to very nice weekly traders it's a donation based guild we got beginner and advanced prog teams uh we do have some pvp nights housing and tails we currently have a housing contest in the mix first place is 500k second place 300 third place 200 it's a spring theme house in snug pod Make sure you guys get your snug pod houses ready. The contest ends July 30th, so you have to be submitted by July 30th. Make sure you have that situated. It is a very cute house, um, very cheap house to basically go all out with your housing fashionista phenomenon that you may be in the background. Um, so make sure you guys uh, check that out. If you want to sign up, just let me know in Discord or in the guild. Um, make sure to check our message of the day for Discord info. And that way you can join our Discords. As always, we want to thank the Cougar City Boosters. And if you would like to become a booster, make sure you hit our Discord up and boost our server you can get your name displayed in all of our videos that we post and you'll have a nice little boost icon next to your name on discord as always if you're not financially stable please do not boost our server we want to make sure that you are able to have um, your normal life before you throw money at us 
to support and boost our discord so make sure that you boost responsibly and i will also like to shout out to the turbo team who just ran tonight they were doing really well tonight um we gave them a shout out earlier in the podcast um in the last podcast and i would like to still give them a shout out because they've been doing wonderful those guys have been working really hard if you want to become a part of the turbo team you can contact mr crackpot or hades at the moment mrs fiddlepont will be available just she has some life issues right now so if you want to be part of the team contact contact mr crackpot or hades for the time being and then mrs fiddlepont you can send her a message but those two uh first will be your first point of contacts for a while um you can always send me a message and i will direct you to the right person as well if you don't know or forgot i will be happy to do so um we are looking for one <clears throat> for one sub for our main um advanced trifecta team if you are interested in that please send me your povs and your parses of the end game content that you have completed this is a sub spot and you will be in a tryout basis with the team at first but we do take the uh if a new spot opens on the team we do give that um open spot to our subs to have if they so wish to do so so the way to get into that spot is to get into our sub list at first so if you are interested in that then you can give me a shout out um if not no worries we're still you know a good family and you can still become and be a part of our family uh, thank you so much for watching guys and have a great great day